Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to another video with my newly acquired Porsche Boxster S. If your name's Tom Edwards, congratulations because you've won the £25 Amazon voucher from the last video. But if you want to win one from this one, all you have to do is like, comment and subscribe and you'll be in with the chance in the next video of winning a £25 Amazon voucher. Now literally yesterday I got back from Germany in the 7 Series. And if you look at it, you can tell it looks like we've conducted a small genocide of flies on the front of that thing from all of the miles on motorways. So I thought the best thing to do after coming back from a trip like that is take another one. And that's why I've got the bag stacked in front of the Porsche today because I'm going down to explore the Isle of Wight. I thought having bought this car just before I went to Germany, not really getting to use it, this would be a nice opportunity to stretch the legs a little bit and get to know the car a little bit more before I potentially take it in for repairs. Sort of, I need to get an idea of how the car is, so to speak. So, come with me today. We're gonna to go down to Southampton, I think, and, and get a ferry across. And um, yeah, just, just have some fun exploring a new place I've never been before in a new car that I'm not used to. First thing then, of course, is to put my luggage in the car. Now, immediately when you think about putting luggage in a car, you wanna put it in the boot. And you would go to the back of the car. There we go to put your luggage in. However, the boot in the back here is very limited because of course you've got to remember this car is mid-engined. And also, if you ever have any sort of shopping or refrigerated items, I'd recommend not putting them in here because it does get jolly hot with the engine being right there. So I can't probably fit my baggage in there for this trip. However, of course, because there is no engine in the front, you then have another boot here under the bonnet lid and actually got some jackets and stuff in there. Look at that, hey, hey, can you see that? Porsche, no, I'm not gonna be one of those guys that wears branded clothing, but as you can see, this is sort of a tall bag that goes in there nicely. Got a small sort of hold all that goes in and this would shut and another bag, which I obviously can't do properly while I'm holding the camera. But yeah, this is actually a really decent sized boot. And having said that, the one in the back isn't exactly small. It will, uh, it will suffice. So I might put some stuff in there and some stuff in the front. Hey, why not? I've got two boots. Anyway, that's enough chat about that. Let's hit the road. So then, the plan is now to go to the Isle of Wight in this. There is a small issue, well it could be a really big issue actually. My ferry is at midday, I've got to get there for about half 11. It's about two hours away or so and it's nine o'clock now. So I've got about half an hour of leeway, which you might be wondering why do I need that? Well the reason I need that is because I'm unable to get petrol anywhere. This stupid country and our stupid media has reported about the fact that there's a bit of a lorry driver shortage in this country, which is very much true, uh, a big lorry driver shortage. So as a result, some petrol stations have been forced to close temporarily just so that the sort of supply of petrol can remain constant and catch up. But what's happened, as soon as the news start reporting that, as you can see here, this one is completely closed. The British public seems to interpret that as oh my god we're going to run out of fuel entirely let's take all of our cars and fill them up and of course most people are sheep they just follow the crowd so as soon as someone they know or you know a colleague does it they go and do it as well so in other words last night i spent about an hour and a half trying to find some fuel sat in queues driving to other petrol stations and didn't so we're currently driving this porsche on 22 miles of range and if I can't get fueled in the next half an hour, I simply, I can't, I can't do the trip. I'll have to, I guess, rebook the ferry for a different car. Well, there's another petrol station here, but I'd imagine it's the same story. That one has actually got its price lights turned on. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but this has come conveniently at a time where the government is uh, eradicating E5 fuel from its pumps and pushing electric. So I do wonder if this is a thing done so that people think, oh God, we can't have that again. I need to buy an electric car now. 
don't know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I do wonder. And sorry, no fuel. And can I just reiterate, the reason there's no fuel isn't because there's a genuine fuel shortage, it's because all day yesterday and the evening before, people spent their time going to petrol stations with their, all their cars, if they have different cars, filling them up, filling up jerry cans. I saw it. In fact, yesterday morning, I was at my local petrol station to use the air machine to pump up the tires on this thing and it was rammed. It took me about 10 minutes just to get into the forecourt so that I could use the air, which obviously no one was, was using. And I was quite confused why it was so busy. And I half thought about filling up while I was there. And I really wish I had now because, well, yeah, you can see the situation I'm in right now. But it is just the lack of intelligence of people and their sheep nature of just following the crowd that has got us in this situation. I wish people could think for themselves and you do sort of well it makes you think that most people in this country have a single digit IQ which I don't know just drove past Tesco here and there's people queuing so I think they might have fuel but having said that last night I spent maybe 40 minutes in queues only to get to the forecourt and then to say we only have diesel or we're totally out. So fingers crossed I'm not too late. I could really, it's just, it's, it's funny. It's, uh, it's a reality check, isn't it? You know, the amount of times I stick the thing in the pump and fill it up and don't think about it. It is a privilege, I suppose, being able to fill up your car and drive and you just take it for granted. I think this situation could have been avoided, like I say, with the lack of, let's say, idiots but it does make you sort of appreciate fuel. I mean, as I'm filming this, I got back from Germany yesterday, uh, spending the whole week filling up that 7 Series. Content will be coming on that soon, by the way. But yeah, fingers crossed, we can get fuel here. I can then stop ranting about this whole situation and go and explore the Isle of Wight. Okay, full tank of fuel, and it's 9.30, which is pretty much our cut off, so let's get going quickly now to Southampton, get the ferry, and go to the Isle of Wight. So finally we're on our way now down to Southampton to jump on the ferry. To be honest, immediately I'm regretting wanting to do another road trip in the UK because when you're in continental Europe, you forget for a moment how awful the lane discipline and just general speed keeping and ability to just see the road as something we share is awful in the UK. It's so, so bad. You know, I've heard people go, oh, French drivers, oh, German drive, well no actually, they're the best in Europe, they're, they're fantastic. Even people who say, oh American drivers, well in America you can use whatever lane you like and the roads are so huge. But here, you've just got people in all sorts of lanes doing different speeds. Yes, I'm in lane four right now, but there's so many people here that could be in lane two or lane one and it, uh, honestly, it's very frustrating. But that's not what I'm going to talk about now anyway. What I want to talk about is the car. So at 70 miles an hour here, we're sitting at 2,600 RPM, or just over. And it is relatively quiet in here. Considering it's convertible, it does feel quite refined. Having said that, I feel like I am shouting a little bit. So it's obviously not as quiet as your regular coupe or my 7 Series or Range Rover. It's a totally different thing. But it's comfortable, it sits nicely at 70. Actually, if I need to accelerate quickly, even in sixth gear, there's a good amount of torque there. And um, yeah, it's, it's perfect really, I've got no complaints. The controls are already easy to get to, it's so minimalist in here, there's, there's nothing really to play with. So you've got your air controls, very clear temperature, very clear ferocity of the, of the vents, and that's it. 
Lots of you have asked what I'm doing about Bluetooth, sort of the ability to listen to your own music. Now this has had some sort of parrot system installed, but it doesn't seem to work and I don't like it anyway. What I do is a very, very simple fix or a simple workaround. Uh, you just order yourself a little FM transmitter from Amazon or Halford sell them. In fact, this one I bought is from Halfords. Uh, cost between five and 20 pounds, depending on which one you go for. And you just plug it into your cigarette lighter port and select a frequency on the adapter and tune your radio to that frequency and connect the adapter with your phone via Bluetooth. It's a very, very easy thing to do. It's not a permanent fixture. I can put this in any of my cars and it will work. The only disadvantage with it is the sound quality isn't perfect. You can hear a little bit of a hiss at times, but as a sort of quick fix, it's very, I mean, it will be a permanent fix for me. It's, it's perfectly good enough uh, for what I need. So yeah, that's how I get around the, the no Bluetooth connectivity issue. All in all though, so far in the few times I've driven it in between now and the last video you saw where I picked it up, uh, the car's been brilliant. It's not given me any reason for concern. The only thing was the front left tire seems to have a slow puncture. So that was down to 13.13 PSI when I went to fill that up yesterday. There is some vibration through the wheel at motorway speed, which could be a number of things. It could quite simply just be the uneven wear on the tires from maybe a little bit of a flat spot on that one. It could be a number of things. It could be suspension components. But the good news is I've got Michelin Pilot Sport 4s being fitted to the car in a few days time. And I've also got it booked in for an inspection and a major service over at a place called ePorsche down near the Guildford area. So I'm looking forward to that. And the cost for that, I think, as advertised, is about, oh, I don't want to say actually, in the region of 300 pounds. And that includes spark plugs. So not at all frightening in terms of cost. So all in all, very good, very happy with the car still. I'm still uh, quite confident that it was a good purchase. I mean, worst case, you know, I'm gonna to get to enjoy it this weekend. And um, yeah, it's amazing to be driving around in a, a Porsche Boxster S for three and a half grand near as. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna switch the camera off now because the speed camera is about to end. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, and, and get down to, to the ferry. So just arriving at the red funnel entrance. I absolutely hate boats, so I'm completely terrified. Uh, on that run, we've averaged around 26 and a half miles per gallon, so not too bad at all. But yeah, hopefully we get in all okay and uh, off we go. Okay, so I've successfully made it to the Isle of Wight. I'm joined by my girlfriend Katie, who's actually, her parents live here, so they know a load of nice spots. And we're going to Compton Bay, which is on the south part of the island. It's apparently very nice. And there's a road called the Military Road, which is also meant to be quite a good driving road. So it'll be nice to stretch the legs out a little bit of this Porsche. For some reason, I thought, that the Isle of Wight was smaller and so the speed limits probably didn't go above 30 but actually there's plenty of national speed limit sections here which means you can get a few good runs. Meanwhile we're just cruising over there with the roof down, the weather has improved from what it was this morning and I've actually just discovered that there's two cup holders in this not one. I thought when you open this it, there was just one but actually if you pull the tab you get a second so perfect, no complaints at all. I love the way this thing sounds and also the way it's geared. It means you're actually at the top of second gear at around 70 miles an hour or something like that. Uh, it's pretty crazy, but I love the sound. But as many of you have commented and suggested and sort of expect from me is that I will do something to the exhaust. And I have indeed got a plan for that. I do want to do something to the exhaust, but unlike previously, I actually quite like the way this thing cruises pretty quietly. I don't want to completely ruin it with drone. I don't think I want to spend a thousand pounds on a valve system either. 
And I've looked at things like the Gundo hack where you essentially make a bypass pipe, but I'm not sure that really works on the Boxsters. Or you can take some baffling out of the bat box. But when you do that, you might as well just delete the whole bat box. But what I'm worried about is if I do that, whether it will be too droney or too tinny, because it is a really nice pure sound and it isn't chavvy in the slightest. But I'm worried if I start fettling around down there, it might give me an effect that I don't really want. And that just doesn't really suit the car. So it does sound perfect and awesome now, but it could just be that little bit louder. So of course, if you've got any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. But look, all the way up now, 7,000 RPM red line, and then the turn into the front is just so good. It grips so well. Man, this is a great road. So it's the next day here in the Isle of Wight and it's a glorious, glorious day, but unfortunately there is a problem. Today I planned on going back to the beautiful military road and getting some shots of the car going down the road, all the nice scenic stuff, and telling you a little bit more about the car. However, unfortunately, we've just left home this morning and I've been greeted with a Czech engine light, um, which is a real shame and maybe this is the beginning of the story as to why this car was so cheap. But as you can see, that orange light there is a Czech engine. So yeah, not ideal really. Unfortunately as well, I do have to drive this back to London this afternoon, which involves getting on the ferry of course, and then about an hour and a half up the motorway, 70 miles or so, which obviously I'm a little bit concerned about, but I'm gonna get it home and see if I can reset anything on my Carly OBD reader, potentially that will do it. But at the moment it's not booked in to be inspected until I think October the 20th. And I did have a plan to do something quite spectacular with this later this week, which if the engine light doesn't clear, I don't think it'll be very wise to do. So sadly, I have to cut short the sort of exploring the Isle of Wight content from this video. And it's gonna be a little bit more now about whether I can limp it back and not break down. Hopefully it's just some sort of exhaust sensor or something like that. In the history it did have an MOT fail based on that before. So I'm hoping it's not anything too minor. I'm just gonna try now and switch the car off and back on again to see if that resets anything, but I'm not so sure. Let's have a little go anyway. And I have to say the engine is idling fine, it's, it's running fine. So there's nothing that really makes me think there's something severely wrong with the engine itself, but let's turn that all off. Ignition on. And see, it wants to do an oil check that takes 58 minutes, which is bizarre. Uh, so I'm gonna cancel that. We'll start it again and see. Yeah, we still have a check engine light there. Hmm, not ideal. So of course, I'm not gonna go on a jolly now around the Isle of Wight. I think I wanna drive this as little as possible now. So yeah, I'll get a ferry back and hopefully be able to drive this back to London without any issues. But yeah, what a shame. It was all going so well, wasn't it? It was all going so well, but maybe now we're starting to discover the reason why this was the price it was. Fingers crossed not. But yeah, a little bit concerning. Okay, so driving off the red funnel at Southampton, still have my check engine light, unfortunately, and 68 miles to drive. So fingers crossed the car makes it back okay. Like I say, the engine is idling fine. It's starting fine. There's no smoke, there's no visible leak. So there's nothing really that tells me I shouldn't drive the car right now, apart from the light itself, which I'm hoping is just some sort of obscure sensor somewhere. But there's not really gonna be any way to know until it gets up on a ramp, and I haven't got anywhere to take it right now. So 
really means I won't be able to drive it until it's sorted unless I'm able to clear it with my Carly OBD reader, which we'll have a quick look at when I get back. But first, let's just focus on getting back in the first place. And yeah, like I say, fingers crossed, all is well. Okay, so engine light is cleared. According to uh, this scanner I used, which was called Car Scanner, um, it was, and I think I've got rid of it, but you may have seen it on camera, it was something to do with an oxygen sensor. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, that has cleared the code. So hopefully that is what it is. Like I said, the engine is running fine. I drove it back that 70 miles yesterday without, uh, without a hitch. So the car feels fine. And so I think it's safe to take to the place I'm taking it later this week. You'll see all about that. And I can't wait to show you that video. Anyway, for now, I apologize for the sort of rough and readiness that this video has become with me sort of just holding GoPros. It started off quite nice and it was going to be a nicely filmed, beautiful video showcasing the Isle of Wight. But now you join me holding a GoPro on a Monday morning in the rain on my driveway. So it hasn't quite turned out the way I wanted, but I hope you've enjoyed this video nonetheless. And I'm glad to say that the Porsche lives another day. So stay tuned with the content upcoming with this car. And I'll see you all very, very soon.